Okay, guys and girls, I'm gonna show you some stuff now. Yeah, some prepper stuff. Yeah, this is real, real stuff here. Here, okay, look, look, there's some gasket there, and another gasket just in case you need something. Hmm. Listen, George, that's my gig, out of the way. Well, okay. Right then, guys, yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, I've got this kit here, and. It's got everything in it except for a chain. Yeah, I've got gaskets galore. And actually, the kit wasn't as good as what I thought it was because when I stripped it down, I realized that I didn't have an O-ring or a sump gasket or uh, a chain. Yeah, the chain was missing, so I had to. Even though I fitted the new cogs, I still use the old chain. It's not that badly stretched, so it's all right. It's gone tight with the new tension on it, okay? So, it's a compromise, unfortunately, I've got in contact with the uh, seller. So anyway, timing on the engine, locking the cam off, and the cam is on the rock on cylinder number one. thing here, this bit of equipment is to set the pulse ring for the camshaft. This is where the camshaft sensor actually uh, gets its reading from, and that's what this tool is for. So you set that before you go and tighten up the nuts, okay? Because the cam's locked at the back, that's in place, then the uh, pulleys can be then tightened up afterwards, okay? Crankshaft is also locked uh, with a, a peg, which I didn't show here, but you probably see it down there. Yeah, so the uh, gasket facing, there's a bit of uh, solidification on the aluminium head bit. Uh, the rest of it looks okay, so yeah, all right there. Um, yeah, it is quite a, a discovery here to find out something. I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? So the gasket, that's a chemical attack. Yeah, the gasket itself, the rubber has swollen up through some sort of chemical reaction. We think it's because of the antifreeze. You can see this, uh, which is, uh, they used red and it should have been blue. Maybe they put brake fluid in it to stop a squealing pump. You never know exactly what people have done to their vehicles. The older there are, the more crimes there are. Anyway, on the sump, there is no ring here on the strainer pipe, which is recommended to replace. Okay, so I paid £3.80, uh, I think it was, for an O-ring. And here's a little tip, okay. I know the O-ring was expensive. <laughs> There's a little tip. When you fit an O-ring... It should uh, make the components stand a little bit proud. So when you tighten it up, it has a crush zone. Okay, so leverage on tools, basically you get a small amount of torque with a small tool and a big amount of torque on a big tool. These screws are done up to something like 8 newton meters, but you do actually get a feel for it when you've been screwing things for a while. This is my mother's car, and she doesn't use it anymore. She doesn't drive, so it sits in the garage for 364 days of the year, and then it has an Italian road test, uh, and then MOT, and I always have to chuck something like this in the tank to make sure that I'm getting a uh, at least an, a decent emissions because this always fails the emissions test. But this year I've done filters oil filter fuel filter air filter things like that to make sure that she will go through because it did fail uh done the oil and just a little note to myself as you noticed i'm scrawling a lot with yellow pens and of course uh, long suffering containers that container has been there for years i use this to drain out and to do the services and store the old oil so it gets an oil change every two years even though it only does about 80 miles a year because it also needs an Italian road test before and after MOT to make sure that she's running all right. Quite easy, however, the battery does go flat quite often. Now, Mum gave me these latex gloves that she's had around for about a thousand years. I think the Egyptians may have even used latex gloves because these are old styles, but the old handy latex glove dispensers, she's given me that, which is good. I can uh, <laughs> wear these old gloves and uh, use the dispenser in the car. Yeah, so I want to quickly show you what I've uh, been using this Citroen for. Basically, is a mobile anything vehicle. Okay, so um, I carry rags and stuff like that when I'm doing servicing on like mum's car or, or a couple of other vehicles. But I'm also carrying the jack axle stands and tools there, which you can't see. 
yeah this is because people are very nosy and they if they see something worth having they could smash into the car and take what they want and usually they do it at night so you can see that i've got a trolley jack there and axle stands and my tools are in a box underneath yeah so i'm always very very wary of this because um, even in the nice place i live uh, here people have stolen bicycles right so uh, this is relevant to mum's car but um, i'll show you the battery here on this vehicle okay i've got it on charge uh, solar powered but it is a bitch to get out because you've got to remove all these panels and take the uh, wiper arms off which even though it is a fairly new battery i had to struggle getting these off they were seized in place but never mind done the whole lot lifts off and it's all plastic and it is necessary because it is also a rain guard okay so uh, the benefit here i notice is the battery cables i'll just take this trim off again the battery cables are underneath there which run across the front which is uh, going to give me potential to run a little bit more power and cables around that way later on mum's car suffers from batteries going flat and i bought her a battery charger but i'm charging my own battery up at the moment because it was flat it was at like 10 volts okay so i'll probably move, I'll move this about and the voltage will change but i am charging it at the moment this battery charger bought um, charges at 3.8 amps and then it will drop down automatically to trickle charge where needs be it's a cheap one from uh, Aldi's and yeah it's it's for as they always say vintage cars storage in cars and blah 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 because it is a trickle charger yeah you can see I've got it from Aldi's 12 pounds yeah so it's a setup I've been using it for about a year but mum keeps unplugging it okay because it is what it is and it's not a dedicated charger like the ambulance brigade where you could plug something in to it and then quickly disconnect it it's um, it's okay for what it is now it will charge at 14.8 volts which is good enough and uh, yeah i was quite surprised at this i just left it on charge but she keeps unplugging it so i need to do something else now i'm charging my battery up and you can see it is actually at 12.2 46 amp hour battery yeah and we do get a window on here and it's not very good you can't really tell unless you've got bright daylight on it whether or not that that is charged or not so what i've done here is i've just left it on charge uh overnight and it did charge it up quite well then i took it to work and i wanted to test it because this is an unknown quantity so 12.7 is a fully charged battery it's a flooded type and en rating which is written on the battery i've now got to set that now this is only an estimate when the uh, manufacturers put an en rating on a battery it is only an estimate now the lorry batteries are en 1000 so in comparison this is en uh, 425 just got to take that back up with this yeah it goes up in tens and goes down in fives this machine yeah so what I will be doing is um, testing this very quick. So it's 425 CCA. That's the EN rating, okay? And then we can see quick test. And I mean this is quick. So it's a pass. It's good and it's pass. 12.7 volts is a fully charged battery. Now I'll tell you here, you can see that it's still black even though it's fully charged. So that's not very good now what i want to do is print this out internal resistance is 6.62 uh, milli ohms which is excellent yeah and from what i can presume this is actually quite a recent battery how this battery tester will tell you it will say it's a good state of health which is a hundred percent and the state of charge is a hundred percent there's no surface charged on this battery so i'm very happy with this this is less money i have to spend out what i'm doing here as you've noticed by now i have this yellow paint pen which i'm scrawling everything on because not because i'm uh, forgetful it's because i just need to remember when i last tested it yeah and the next thing to do is to test the alternator i'm just doing a quick chest test here and this is no load situation 14.3 but the other thing with alternators, they do have AC leakage on them, 
Okay, now I'm doing a ripple test here, if you've ever heard of that, and it's done by an oscilloscope, okay. I'm looking for leakage of AC voltage through the diodes. Now, if the diodes are going to fail, you will have a discharge overnight to Earth from the battery via the alternator. However, the ripple is fairly okay on this one. It's not dramatic at all. So this is just a quick check to tell me on the scale of one volt and five seconds reading is, is, is okay it's okay I can drop that down to one seconds and get the spikes uh, different you can see how the ripple is this is why they call it a ripple test however in the corner there you'll see there isn't any dramatic peaks at all yeah so quite happy with that the alternator is okay and it's functioning at the moment AC leakage can cause all sorts of problems with electronics or vehicles and if it's too big obviously it's going to knock out electronic components as well yeah so it's something to not disregard although you may not have an oscilloscope it's worth thinking about getting it tested by somebody who knows what they're doing now my handicap is I have to when I'm charging up a battery is have a long lead out from the house to the vehicle okay so I put this on charge I've been cranking it for a little while that's a half charge battery 12.4 put it on charge 3.8 amps okay and I'll leave that for a while to put some charge into the battery can't trickle charge it but I do have a problem because I do not have a battery charger anymore I'm quite conventional and I was looking at a battery charger, car battery charger here, which is about 46 quid. It's sort of one of those traditional workshop sort of things. And you can see the specification here charges up to 100 amp hour batteries. But what I was looking at was battery conditioners and trickle chargers. Yeah. And basically I'm looking at getting a battery conditioner. For batteries as they get older they need something to uh, clear the crap off the plates yeah so I'm going on to the internet and I'm starting to look at eBay and the stuff that's for sale and I've got one here intelligent smart battery charger pulse repair that's the key word 13 pounds 28 so I'm looking at a multifunctional battery charger 12 to 24 volt not that I deal with 24 volt at home but 12 to 24, sometimes you get a better, uh, more powerful amperage rating. So this is 8 amps at 12 volts and 4 amps at 24. But the battery range is 6 to 150 amp hour. This is something to pay attention to. You need to know the amp average of your battery and suit the charger to match. So <laughs> I started looking for uh, reviews and I found this guy jeep solid and actually he's talking sense i watched the video and he was uh, talking about surface charge and voltage outputs and all that sort of thing and he was reviewing a uh, battery reconditioner which is the foxier yeah and i went to have a look at one obviously these are chinese they're all chinese and found that uh, they are on ebay at 13 14 pounds yeah which is i would say it's not a bad price it's reasonable and you get what you pay for it's a consumer item there's so much of this crap about it's unbelievable but they are similar so 13.99 quickly buy one click the buy it now button uh yeah like fuck i really need to do some more research on this but i did i started to read it and it okay you can buy one and be happy with it for now it will do the job as it says because they do generally they you are protected by consumers rights and i'm sorry about this this computer is a bit dodgy when it comes to screen um, grabbing but i'm having a look at the details here and that's uh, battery ranges from 4 to 100 amp hours so that's only a smaller battery but the 12 to 14.8 volts dc good uh, five to six amp charging rate okay i'd rather have a 10 amp charging rate but nonetheless it is a battery charger for 12 volt batteries okay so i'm having a look here and uh, because it is uh, a repair pulse 
repair function does say that it will not uh, repair all batteries especially if they are completely dead you need something that's a little bit more active it has to have some charge in it and the pulse will clean the plates over a period of time and it says here four to a hundred amp hour efficiency application is about 80 odd percent so okay it's a consumer product it will do your domestic stuff and uh, they don't expect you to use these for years in an in an industrial situation however it will do for home use and i thought yeah for the price of it not bad it will do what it says on the tin jeep solids review at the end of the day he recovered a battery which started off at something like six volts it took two days to recover the battery but he had success with it not that it'll do it for every single battery especially if they're damaged you're just bombarded with stuff when you're going to research and do shopping if you like or, or parts and equipment acquisition quite fancy this one orange one here which is the uh Ruhr, maybe it looks more scandinavian or european than chinese but everything's made in china these days so this is what this is dfc 30p however it's at 70 pounds and you get what you pay for at the end of the day the more solid it is the more reliability you're going to get out of it and it looks like they are an established company making equipment which looks nice yeah i like the color yeah that's what i like about it so i'm going to buy one straight away well no you have to look at the uh, specifications okay so it's 1224 voltage charging yeah which could come in handy but 24 volt stuff generally has a better charge current 15 amp and 20 amp but it also has max charge current which is a fast charge 27 amps yes that's about right which is a fast charge for uh, batteries if you want to get them underway quickly now the features on this this is what i'm interested in i'm going to explain to you once i can scroll down here i like a moving needle i don't like digital readouts on battery chargers i don't know why maybe it's just because I'm, i've grown up with stuff but it's compact and robust it trickle charges fast charge switch fast charge as i told you straight away even before um, looking at the pictures okay so yeah okay 12 24 nice description and it has the battery repair facility as well okay and the fuse yes good pulse battery repair technology okay a good old-fashioned flick switch which can be repaired and a strong handle well that's a joke in a workshop it's fused as well and uh, 1224 switches but this is what's interesting the fuses internally any good workshop battery charge will have protection which you can quickly change but it also has protection to save the internals as well so i like that this is something to put on the wish list yep got the specifications again in the box you get bits and pieces fuses you can find from anywhere but i'm just looking to see if it comes from china or not no it doesn't it comes from the uk which is interesting so that's sort of my ideals what i've uh, put over to you now i'm curious to see what you have at home how do you charge your battery do you have one of these uh, pulse uh, repair facilities smart chargers on your battery charger or are you just a traditional wing it and borrow a battery charger from somewhere let me know in the comments below